Okay, hey, welcome friends here. We're going to um, cover Lesson 3.5 today. Our topic of discussion is going to be relational databases. Um, I've attached in the classroom shell some reading. Um, it comes from uh, Chapter 2, of maybe some of you have seen this book before, the Cronky uh, Database Concepts book. Really a great text for understanding relational databases. Uh, I recognize that in this this particular uh, class we have a we have kind of a mixed cohort. We have some IT students. In fact, I think the majority of our students might be IT students. And if you are an IT student, you probably have already taken Introduction to Computer Modeling and then CSCI 240 Databases and SQL. Uh, this might be very redundant material for you. You might be real experts in this area. Uh, other folks in the class, if you haven't done a lot with databases, uh, this this will be, a, I think, a pretty uh, substantial exposure to how the whole relational database model works. Okay, so there's some vocabulary here that I'd like you to pay close attention to, and then I, I again, I'll go back to that reading I've given you out of out of the uh, Cronky database concepts. I've looked at a lot of database books and. I'll tell you what, for really understanding the concepts behind relational databases, that's really a top-notch uh, reference. Okay, so um, so first I'll start with a, and I, I want to make sure that this particular model we start with has some bearing to the medical field, okay, and, and clinical practices. So if you take a look here, uh, in the upper kind of corner of the screen here, you will kind of make sense out of this. I have a table here. And it's a table that has uh, physicians, okay? And this is an entity is what we'll look at this. It's another word for table. And if you look at this entity, we have the last name and first name of a physician, whatever their specialty is. And then we have a, a unique way of identifying for, uh, that individual. And so we're, we're using something called a physician key, all right? And that's a, a and database language, another term for that is that's your primary key. And really, by itself, uh, the physician ID doesn't have any real meaning. In fact, we use the term surrogate key for it, uh, just like we would, say, uh, your student ID number. You have a 790 student ID number. In actuality, that doesn't mean anything whatsoever. But it allows us to connect you as a student or myself as a faculty member to a particular course, okay? And then a whole bunch of other data. All right, so that's a unique identifier for our physicians. Over here, we have another table. So we have physicians here. We have patients down here. We have just the last name and a first name. And, and this might be uh, uh, demographic data. So we can identify a patient. We can also maybe record some other information if we're going to extend this example, their address, telephone number, uh, et cetera. And again, we have a primary key that uniquely identifies uh, each patient because we could most most definitely have two Homer Simpsons as patients, two different uh, two different uh, individuals, and to to uh, differentiate between the two, we would have different patient IDs. All right, and then down here it looks like we have some sort of admissions table. So here um, a, a patient. In fact, we'll look at patient nine 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 six was admitted on September thirtieth and was discharged on October first. Okay. And 9996 refers to Homer Simpson, and that would probably give us some other information if we need to pull that. So a patient gets together at, with a uh, attending physician um, to create a record, all right? And that's a stay in a hospital. And we have their, their admit date, their discharge date, and who their physician is. And again, their physician, well, we're going to have a bunch of demographic data on them. Um, Physician 1001 has a specialty of psychiatry, and we got patient Homer Simpson there, so I'll let, I'll let you folks read into that, whatever you, whatever you think. Um, so let's go to some definitions here. So relational databases. By definitional, relational database is a collection of data items organized as a set of formally described tables from which data can be accessed or reassembled in many different ways without having to reorganize the overall structure of the, of the table. Okay, so, so relational databases as opposed to, because there's another model here, it's called the flat spreadsheet or the flat table. And uh, when flat tables are great. They're a great way of, of tracking information, but as our data sets become more complex, we can't track it all with one table. We need multiple tables, and then we need a way of correlating those tables together. 
and thus the, the foundation for relational databases. All right, we use a standardized language. Language has really not changed since 1992. There's little, uh, there, there's little differences uh, between Oracle SQL, um, Microsoft SQL, MySQL, uh, you know, there's a little bit, even access in, in Microsoft SQL, very little bit, okay? But they have the same fundamental features and that, that language is known as structured query language and it's great for writing reports. If we have an understanding of SQL, we can pull data from multiple tables, multiple related tables and in the form of what's known as a select statement. Okay, so it's a very, very handy tool to be able to uh, understand um, SQL, structured query language. All right, entity, let's describe an entity. I'll just say an entity is a table. All right, now let's be more specific. An entity is something of importance to a user that needs to be represented in a database. All right, and we track, when we talk about entities, uh, we track them for a single theme or a single topic. So our, our, our previous example, we had one table for for physicians and we had one table for patients okay and each of those are separate entities and we need to track them with with uh, separate tables okay a relation okay a relation is a two-dimensional table that has specific characteristics okay so so table dimensions like a matrix consist of rows and columns right that's the way we form a, a table and we, we bring a, a record Together, we start looking at the different attributes that we'll track on it or the different fields. Um, so so uh, the question, questions, interesting questions come up like in a table, can we have, uh, can we actually have a table um, that has no records in it? Or can we have a database with no records in it? And the, the answer is absolutely, okay? It's not very useful at that point because it has been populated. But when we first start working with relational databases, uh, none of our tables will be populated because we're, we're creating a structure. We're creating a structure where we can put records in, and, uh, but we, we need to have the appropriate tables and, and, and fields that go along with that. Okay? Um, list of, of characteristics, and, and I'll let you, well, I'm going to run through these quickly here. So rows contain data about an entity or records about an entity. Columns contain data about the attributes or the fields of that entity. So, so for instance, uh, first name might be something that we have for every single physician. So first name is a field, but, but uh, uh, Dr. Stevens, his first name's doctor. Okay, let me go a little more detail with that. Troy Stevens, Troy would be the doctor's first name. Okay, um, cells of a table can only hold a single value. We'll look at some examples where um, we, we might try and squeeze two in. All entries in a column, okay, are of the same type or same kind. They have to have the same data type, all right? So we can't mix, uh, you know, have one be text, another be numbers. One is, uh, you know, if one's a rate of pay, I can't put uh, text values in there. Uh, an interesting uh, characteristic is that columns, their order is no longer important. Okay, so we can move them around and we can select just viewing certain columns or certain fields of data. The other interesting, uh, uh, the interesting characteristic is that the order of the rows is unimportant. In fact, we might want to use filters, you know, filter is, or, or sorts to move the, the order of the rows around. Okay, the last characteristic of relation is that we, we don't want two rows to be identical. Okay, it's a duplicate record. And there's, there's no reason for that. Okay. So here's a sample relationship, and it's really, uh, or a sample relation, it's really quite simple here. It's a table, and we have uh, an employee first name and their last name, and then we also give them a primary key or an, a unique employee number. All right, so here's a non-relation. Let's look at this one. So over here, we have an employee. We have their last name, but in this particular record right here, records are horizontal, fields are vertical, Okay, records are rows, fields are columns. Um, right here, we, we have, don't we have two values in here? Okay, those aren't, that's not one phone number, it's two phone numbers, okay? So we, we need to have a, a methodology for dealing with that, okay? Um, here's another example, notice this particular record and the fourth record down here are identical, okay? So, so in a, again, this is not a relation anymore. Um, because it's breaking those rules. All right, we have two records that are identical. All right, so here's some terminology here, and, and maybe a way to read this table. 
the everything in this column is the same. So another word for table might be file or relation. Okay. Another word for row you might see uh, is a record. Or here's another one that you might not be so familiar with: a tuple. We use the word tuple. Okay. Um, and here's a column. Another word we use for columns when we start working with databases is fields. Okay. Spreadsheet might be a column. Table might be a column. Um, but we start talking about um, um, databases, we talk about fields. And another word for this is relation or uh, attributes. Excuse me. Okay. So way read this table. These are all the same. Column two is all the same. Column one is all the same, and they're just different different ways of referring to it. Okay. A key. Okay. Is a, a key is one or more columns of a relation that is or are used to identify a row. Okay. And and some keys are going to be unique. All right. So an example of a unique key is the data value is unique for each row. So in other words, none of them are the same. And consequently, the key will uniquely identify that row. So if I have that, that particular value, it will uniquely identify that record. As an instant, or as an example, uh, is your 790 number as a student. If I have that number, I can uniquely identify it. Okay? Versus non-unique keys, data values might be shared among several rows. For instance, if I'm tracking uh, a person's zip code, I might have several records with the same zip code. And I could still use that as a key for maybe uh, sorting regions or something along those lines. Um, so, so it might not identify one row, but it's going to, again, I, give me some unique identifier. So if I want to find all the people uh, in the middle of Missoula, I would look for everybody with zip code 59801, for instance. All right. A composite key, uh, and, we, and, and I'll just preface this, I, I really don't use composite keys a whole lot. Uh, we'll, we'll look at a, a substitute for that, but sometimes we can have two fields, and if we combine those two fields, we can uniquely identify users. So for instance, uh, an example might be if we combine a first, middle, and last name, we might be able to uniquely identify um, a particular record, okay? So composite keys, here's some examples. Identify a family member, you need to know family ID, first name, suffix. Um, but you need to know all three to make this work. All right. Here's another term, candidate key. All right. We a lot of times find in databases or in, or in tables, we, we have multiple keys that could be used as our primary key. So for instance, maybe in a health record, we might have a unique identifier um, for a uh, patient record, and we also might have a social security number. Both of them are unique, and because both of them are unique, uh, either one could be used as a primary key. Um, thus, they're both known as candidate keys. All right, primary key is the candidate key that we choose to be the main key for the relation. All right, and, and really, if you know the primary key, you can uniquely identify any row in that that particular uh, table. Okay. So a table may be related to another table. In fact, there's the power of, of relational databases. So an employee, some examples here, might work in a particular department. So as we organize our, our uh, I guess, our, our hierarchy in our organization, usually large organizations are broken down into various departments, and departments have uh, one or more employees in them. Okay? And then maybe each department has a manager. All right, that oversees employees. So we have these we have these kind of real life relationships that that can exist with entities, and we also transfer that into that uh, same mindset for our databases in our relational data database. Okay, here's another one: a foreign key. Okay, so foreign keys only exist when we have relationships between two or more tables. Okay, so so if you're going to have a relationship, the primary key in one table is the foreign key in another table, all right, which, which sounds kind of complex, but let me, sh let me show you an example here, okay? So here, here we have two tables. If you look closely, my table on the left is uh, a table of projects, and every project has an ID, okay, which is a primary key, of a project name, and then somebody is identified as the manager, okay? Over in this other table, we have a, we have a list of all our managers, Okay, so we might have, uh, you know, maybe four managers and maybe a hundred projects. And we could create a relationship between these where the primary key in the manager table also serves as a foreign key in the project table. 
Okay, so so this is going to bring up again. This is going to bring up some re unique relationships here, but this is our definition of primary key and foreign key. So project ID is a primary key for project. Manager ID is a primary key for manager. Okay, project also has manager ID, which is a foreign key, which links a manager to a particular project, and that's the relationship between those. Okay, another really important detail here, I think, is that when we, and, and, and we're maybe spend less time creating relational databases and maybe more time utilizing them. And one of the really important tools is to know, especially if you're writing reports and uh, using SQL as a language, we need, need to know the exact names. We need to be precise. All computing tasks require precision. All right, so I always find and I always write things in a standard record format here. So, for instance, if I go back up here, I think this makes sense to us because of our experience maybe working with uh, tables, all right? But if I look here, here's another way to write the same, and this is the structure, the overall structure of my table, okay? So I could put the name of the entity, the primary key I always underline, but if you look at these three other values that are separated by commas and placed within parentheses, those are, those are my fields. So project has three fields and project ID is the primary key. Okay, over here, manager um, is another entity or another table. It has a primary key manager ID and it also has a field called manager name. And notice that why this is necessary. I chose somewhere along the line to, instead of use the full text manager name or manager underscore name or manager space name, I have MRG. N-A-M-E, okay? And then the way I, in sta standard record format, I, I choose to uh, I link two tables together is, and, and I can show the manager ID actually comes from the primary key manager ID in the manager table, even though it resides in the project entity, okay? So again, go through these, ex you got lots of these examples in a Cronky reading I gave you that shows you lots of, kind of lays this out for you. Take a look at those and think those through. Okay, so here, here's another foreign key example here. Here I have departments and employees, okay? So I have a table of employees, and, and as you might guess, department ID is your primary key over here. Employee ID is your, uh, your primary key for employees, okay? So we can identify those, but we also have, because we have a relationship between these two tables, all right? The department ID is a foreign key in my employee uh, table, but it's the primary key in my department table. All right, same example. And again, I can write this in a standard record format and, and actually illustrate this uh, horizontally um, in, a, in a format that would make it very easy for somebody that would, knew a little bit about relational databases to come in and write a report. Okay, and come in and say, all right, we need the um, employee name, the department name, and the location. Okay, and we know that we would be able to join those two tables uh, based upon apartment ID. All right. Okay, 